an ambulance races past Peter Walsh on a London street. He sees this as a triumph of British civilization. How marvellous it is to have emergency services that whisk people off to the hospital. Perhaps someone has hit their head, been struck by a car, or succumbed to a disease. Tragedy can befall anyone, really. But Peter stops himself from dwelling on morbid things. Inside the ambulance is the body of Septimus Warren Smith. Only moments ago, Septimus leapt from his bedroom window to escape being forcibly taken to a rest home for his shell shock. What will become of his faithful wife, Lucrezia? This will remain a mystery. Peter watches the ambulance round a corner and listens to its bell chime until it fades into the distance. Hey team, just a reminder, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It really helps the channel out and our next upload could be on something taught in your next class. Thanks and back to the video. Taking in the scene of the hustle and bustle, Peter remembers Clarissa. They used to ride at the top of the omnibus and hunt for treasures in the Caledonian market. She'd been such good company in those days. How long have they known each other now? 30 years! Yet their friendship has often been painful and difficult. There were also constant interruptions, like this morning when Elizabeth burst in on them. Peter arrives at his hotel and discovers a letter from Clarissa. She must have written it straight after their conversation that morning. He steals himself to read it. Everything to do with Clarissa always takes a toll on him. But it is nothing but a polite, affectionate thanks. It upsets and annoys Peter. Why did she even bother? Why couldn't she just leave him be? She'd married Dalloway and lived with him in perfect happiness for all these years. Loneliness crushes Peter again. Peter suspects that Clarissa wrote the letter because seeing him that morning had made her feel something. She'd kissed his hand, maybe even felt some regret. Perhaps she remembered their youthful optimism, how they'd thought they'd change the world together. But here they were in reality, middle-aged and mediocre. And anyway, Peter knows their marriage wouldn't have been successful. Peter is struck by a photo of Daisy he keeps in his pocket. She is so beautiful in this photo, and their romance is much simpler than it had been with Clarissa. No fuss or bother. Daisy is only 24 and said she would give Peter everything. She also said she didn't care what people thought of them, which had pleased him a lot. Peter knows he's quite dependent on women, he loves being in their company. He admires the way they love so generously, while he is prone to terrible bouts of jealousy. Still deep in thought, Peter decides to go down to dinner before he heads to Clarissa's party. Meanwhile, Lucy runs full tilt down the stairs of the Dalloway residence. She wants all of Mrs. Dalloway's guests to be struck by how impressively clean and bright the house is. There is a rumour that the Prime Minister himself is coming, but Lucy isn't sure if it really matters at this point. Catering for a party like this is going to keep her occupied. Now all the ladies in their finery are slowly ascending the stairs, one by one. Yet among them, Miss Elizabeth Dalloway stands out as singularly beautiful. At the door, Mrs Clarissa Dalloway greets her many glamorous guests. Peter Walsh, newly arrived, already regrets coming. This is Clarissa at her worst. She is insincere and over the top as she greets him. He wishes he'd stayed at the hotel, reading a book, or went to the music hall instead. He doesn't know anyone at this party. Clarissa can feel Peter's disapproval. This party is going to be a failure. She's sure of it. 
Why did he come if all he was going to do was criticise her? Standing by the yellow curtains, Miss Ellie Henderson watches the room. She is a little annoyed that Clarissa gave her such a late invitation to her party. She suspects Clarissa didn't want to invite her at all. Ellie can't blame her. After all, they are only cousins and had drifted apart since Clarissa's rise in society. Ellie then notices Elizabeth Dalloway, looking so grown up with her hair done in a fashionable way and wearing a beautiful pink dress. She can't be more than 17. Richard Dalloway is nice enough to come and make light conversation with her, but they are interrupted by Peter Walsh. Peter takes Richard, his old rival, by the elbow and leads him right across the room. Clarissa turns and notices the yellow curtain billowing in the breeze again. One of her guests, Ralph Lyon, she believes, beats it back. She is overwhelmed by that familiar sense of failure. The curtain seems to be a sanctuary for her guests, who feel isolated and lonely. This means her party is a failure after all. But then, mercifully, Ralph turns and speaks to another person, and people start connecting again. Perhaps it's not going to be a failure after all. Suddenly, Clarissa hears her name being called out from across the room. She turns and it's Sally Seaton. After all these years, she looks older, happier, but also less lovely. Around Sally, Clarissa notices her room's full, the voices roaring, the blowing curtain and the roses Richard had given her. It is indeed a beautiful scene. Mr. Wilkins, who they hired to assist with the party, urgently calls Clarissa. The Prime Minister has arrived. She notices that he looks very ordinary, even though he is dressed in gold lace. As he walks around to greet everyone, with Clarissa, then with Richard escorting him, he tries to look important. Peter watches from the side of the room, feeling annoyed by the snobbery of the English. He despises the Prime Minister's gold lace. Sally manages to catch Clarissa and leads her to Peter. Clarissa looks them over, her two old friends. But Clarissa cannot stay. She has a party to host. As she moves away, Clarissa notices how much Sally has changed. Gone was the Sally who ran naked through the hallways to retrieve her toiletries for her bath. She was warm, alive. The spark that had lit Sally from within had gone. Clarissa greets her next guests, Sir William Bradshaw and his lovely wife, Lady Bradshaw. Sir William apologises for arriving so late. Lady Bradshaw explains that her husband had received a telephone call. A young patient of Sir William's had killed himself. He'd been in the army. Oh, Clarissa's mood dips immediately. These people have brought death to her party. How dare they? She imagines the young man throwing himself from a window. The ground flashes up and thud. She could see it. Why did the Bradshaws have to bring death with them to her party? She thinks about Sir William, who was undeniably a great doctor but there was a side of him that seemed almost evil, without any sense of passion. Did Sir William try to take this young man's soul and make his life unbearable? Clarissa knows what that feels like. Even just this morning, she'd felt overwhelmed by the length and depth of life. She wonders if life had ultimately overwhelmed that young man. But. As Clarissa approaches the window and looks out, she is calmed by what she sees. The beautiful evening sky and that dignified old lady next door, getting ready for bed. She hears Big Ben yet again, striking in the distance. The young man, in his final act, has led Clarissa to feel the beauty, the fun of life. 
She even feels glad that he had done it. Meanwhile, Sally and Peter have been looking for Clarissa. Sally tells Peter that she has five enormous sons. Peter is struck once again by how the decades have changed her, how motherhood has given her a new softness. Of course, Peter fiddles with his pocket knife the whole time, opening and shutting it, again and again. Sally watches Peter's absent-minded fiddling. He was always an odd one, and they had been so close when he was in love with Clarissa. But Clarissa had chosen Richard, and if she remembers correctly, Peter had gone off to India and made an unhappy marriage. She doesn't know if he has children, and she doesn't feel like she could ask him now. Sally announces that she is very rich, thanks to her husband, and reminisces about how penniless she was in her youth. Back then, she would do just about anything to get to Borton. One time, she pawned off a priceless ring that Marie Antoinette had given to one of Sally's ancestors. Sally was sure that Borton kept her sane, letting her escape her unhappy home. Ultimately, Sally feels that Clarissa has done much more for her than Clarissa will ever know. They had been close friends, and even though it's been years since they last spoke, Sally will always treasure their friendship. That's why she'd come, even without an invitation. Sally sees Elizabeth Dalloway cross the room, looking beautiful. How different she looks to Clarissa at her age. Elizabeth reminds Sally of a lily by the side of a pool. Sally admires Elizabeth's attachment to her father, Richard, who has been looking for her. Richard notices Elizabeth approaching him and, for a moment, does not recognise her. He only notices her beauty before he suddenly realises that she is indeed his Elizabeth, looking lovely in her pink dress. The party is winding down, and Richard and Elizabeth are glad it's over. He is proud of Elizabeth and cannot help but tell her, though he did not feel he could at first. Elizabeth beams at the comment. Sally, noticing the guests departing, decides to say goodnight to Richard on her way out. Peter agrees to come, but stays put for a minute. He feels a dawning sense of terror. Or is it happiness? What could possibly excite him now? It is Clarissa's presence, he realises, for there she is. The day ends, but all these fascinating characters will have a way of lingering in our minds. It truly has been a celebration of life. Then again, as Clarissa, Peter and Septimus have shown us, regrets of the past have a way of catching up with us. Of all the characters whose memories, dreams and anxieties we've witnessed, who intrigued you the most? We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.